it crosses the blood-brain barrier, and the first thing it does is it hits pregnenolone. It turns to pregnenolone at that point. And then from pregnenolone, it can go to several different directions, or it could be very calming, it could become more alert, or it could be, in a way, um, for hypervigilance and for learning. There's different pathways you can go down. And ideally, it moves to allopregnenolone, which is the calming. That's the GABA agonist. That's the anti-anxiety part of the brain. That's the ideal pathway. So hormones really do have a direct impact on brain chemistry and how you feel. And this is where women who take progesterone really feel the disconnect if they're reverse responders. When you take progesterone in orally and you're the type of reverse responder that's over sulfates, that takes the progesterone and sequesters it and stores it as a sulfated version, you're going to feel as if you're taking the progesterone and you're going to feel alert, but not tired. You're not getting the allopregnolone benefit. You're not going to have the full anxiety and irritability and upset that comes with the 5-alpha pathway, but you're going to have that modulated version because in your brain it's moving towards sulfation to buffer it and to calm it down. The thing is, is like, why does that happen? It's similar with women with the 5-alpha reductase pathway is sulfation is because women who have you know, um, a lot of stress and a lot of trauma, we know that the fluctuations in cortisol and we know that these big highs and lows with that, that stress that happens in your lives, the body feels safer when it sulfates hormones. And it doesn't say, okay, we're just going to sulfate progesterone. It's actually sulfating all of your hormones. It's going to be sulfating DHEA. It's going to be sulfating your estradiol. It's going to be sulfating progesterone. It's your body's trying to buffer and calm down when it's seeing that that, that volatility. Another thing you'll notice with them, um, people who have the similar thing, women who have, you know, that, that big shifts or big swings in their hormones, you see that with women um, um, perimenopausal where the estradiol tends to do these big highs and lows. These big swings in estrogen do push the body also into hypersulfation where the body wants to calm down these swings and it's trying to control estrogen, but it's having the same impact on progesterone. And so these women will present to clinic and they're having these hyperestrogen spikes I see on their labs. I know they're going through this. I give them progesterone. They're like, the progesterone didn't help me sleep at all. The progesterone didn't really do much to modulate the impact of estrogen neurologically for me. It didn't give me that calming. It's because the brain is still stuck in that sulfation pathway because they've been over-sulfating. So the brain's been over-trained to sulfate.